Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today is May 2nd, 2020, and um, I wanted to start the uh, news update off with a new product from Multipurpose UFC. Um, these guys reached out to me after seeing the uh, button box I had covered in the last news bit, and they're pretty excited about a product they're working on. Uh, it looks like a modular design where you can continually just change the faceplate to support various modules. Uh, pretty cool concept. And what they're doing here is they've provided me with an exclusive video that hasn't been utilized anywhere yet or posted uh, of using the F-18 uh, box that they have with DCS World and the F-18. Uh, I asked them a couple questions as well to include and basically I said, well, what's the cost and availability looking like? And they said 380 euros for the first batch plus delivery. Uh, they plan to have this ready by mid-July, and they're currently enlisting people to collect interest in orders. Uh, I said, well, what's the product made of? And they said, mainly built from 3D printed PLA. The main plate and front cover is PMMA, laser cut and engraved. And uh, one of the cool things is, is it looks like they can add your call sign and name on it if you wanted it. And I said, well, what kind of connectivity is this? Is this a USB 2 or a USB 3.0 plus device? And they said there's two USB 2.0 ports on it. One is for plug and play buttons uh, to be seen as a joystick from Windows and directly usable in DCS and any other sims. And the other is to be used in pair with DCS BIOS to make all displays working not sure what the DCS BIOS is, but it does somehow or another include data on those little OLED displays right there. So my guess is that's what that is. Um, and I said, well, is this a one-man show? Because he reached out to me. I said, do you, do you have a team? And uh, I said, what's your guy's background? And uh, Andre is the guy that reached out to me, call sign Shaka. He takes care of the software and displays and en display engineering on the product. His background is eight years as a civilian aircraft maintenance engineer, four years in system administration, and two years as a DCS server administrator. So these guys play DCS, which is cool. Uh, Marco, whose call sign is Paco, is the CAD designer in the project. He has 11 years as an engineer in automated packaging systems. And, and then there's Alessio whose call sign is Scoofer, and he's a graphic designer uh, for the project, and that is what he does in real life. So it's pretty promising. Uh, I think it's going to be a little expensive, but for what it does, I think it's pretty cool because it's bringing in all that data that matches what's on the screen, and being able to interface with it like that, and then change as you press things is pretty impressive. It's a little more than just a button box like some of the other products I've seen out there. And that's what I think makes it promising and probably why it costs more money too. But uh, they're going to keep me posted on this as things go. So let's go on over to their website and take a look at that next. So this is a look at their website now. And if you scroll down, they've taken the time to create a pretty detailed website, which is really nice. And uh, they go on to talk about you know what their goal is and the concept for this. And uh, basically, it has working displays. It's front cover swappable, and it's fully customizable with a logo and a call sign. So if you wanted to have your logo and a call sign on your you know, face plates, uh, it looks like they're able to do that for you. And it goes on to say that pretty much everything's almost ready to go with the, two, the, the version 2 prototype. And it uh, goes to talk about the team as Scoofer is graphic designer, Paco is concept and CAD designer, and Shaka is into the software and displays part of the development of their team. And the idea behind this is this is going to be a panel that supports multiple modules. So, so far, it has F-18C and A-10 Warthog. And those are the plates that you can see above on the website there. Uh, coming soon will be Tomcat integration and Harrier integration. And um, from what it looks like, um, it wouldn't be hard to incorporate other modules as well, because it looks like it's just a simple faceplate swap. So something that's pretty cool, and I'll be following what these guys have going on, and they're going to keep me informed of the development as things progress. But it sounds like a very promising piece of hardware. Uh, 380 euros sounds kind of expensive, but, you know, people are willing to spend that on joysticks and throttles and whatnot and uh, if it works like they say it's going to work and it works as well as it did in the video that they had shown us uh, I think it could be a very cool addition 
to people's cockpits in DCS world and especially with the seamless integration that they're talking about so very cool stuff I'm gonna keep my eye on these guys and uh, again once I have more I will bring it to you as well and I'll include a link to this uh, website in the uh, notes underneath of the video as usual so in terms of news from Eagle Dynamics uh, they posted their weekly newsletter and basically it just goes on to promote you know fly everything for free still which are the warbirds um, there is a P47 development report though which I thought was interesting the undercarriage is tuned for accurate ground steering engine cooling exhaust systems and turbochargers are in final testing uh, the external model much of the fine detailing has been done to finish the aircraft exterior the forward section of the cockpit has been seriously revised and those changes are quite visible in the screenshots Cockpit night lighting, instrument luminescence decay after UV light was implemented for all cockpit indicators and markings. And they go on to show some more screenshots of it. Before I go to those, um, the channel, a DCS World module, we would like to take this opportunity to share the growing realism of ground operations. We encourage you to explore newly released World War II battle ready assets. We have a long way to go, and your feedback as a community helps to contribute to the future of DCS World. Take control of ground ops with combined arms. Thank you again for your commitment, passion, and support. And uh, if you head on over to the screenshots in development section, you'll find a slew of new images of the P-47, and it is looking grand. This may be by far the most detailed warbird that these guys have put out. It looks absolutely fantastic. Just when I start to think that, you know, it's getting a little bit bland in World War II, they come out with something like this. Pretty cool stuff. So over at Reflected Simulations, uh, he's posted a couple new posts. One of them was, you know, in the Fear of the Bones, my story-driven F-14 campaign, you will be expected to follow Navy procedures. Today I realized it's hard to remember everything by heart, so I made some diagrams that will appear on the briefing and kneeboard panels to help you. You can see an example here. I can't wait to replace the Stennis with the supercarrier and the Forestal, finally. So, that's going to be pretty cool. In addition, um, last week he mentions, I had this wild idea, I need your opinion please. Would you be interested in a World War II combined arms campaign? Not as a battlefield commander having to manage, manage dozens of units, but scripted in a way that you are a single tank commander reviving historical battles and engagements. What do you think? Is it worth the effort? I think that would be pretty cool. Uh, I would like to see that. Um, I did download the combined arms while it's on free play and I did a first impressions video and while I wasn't that impressed with it, uh, first off, because it doesn't support VR supposedly and um, just the tanks and whatnot seem a little wonky um, it does seem more like a game in a sim and if I want to play a game of tanks it seems like War Thunder is much more fun but to be able to do the World War II stuff that interests me because I haven't tried the World War II stuff and the newly released units uh, in the World War II assets pack of last week. I would love to see some missions firsthand utilizing this stuff. I'm going to see if I can find some to put together a video uh, of Combined Arms Revisited utilizing the World War II genre stuff in the Normandy map. I think that might be pretty cool, but I'm going to have to see. In IL-2 news, it looks like these guys have put together another video. Uh, it says, Instrument and Canopy Reflections, Work in Progress. So uh, they're definitely working on adding some new reflections and um, details in the cockpits. That's pretty cool. The IL-2 cockpits look really damn good. Uh, I think they just la lack some of the depth, I think, that I see in the DCS cockpits at times. Uh, some of these tend to look 2D more than 3D, uh, but what they're doing right here with the reflections and stuff, it looks like they're trying to catch up with DCS, and the effect is pretty cool, and uh, it would be nice to see this working and not killing the frame rate too, though. That's what I'm kind of worried about, but I'll post a link to this so you guys can check it out for yourself. So in other news, 
there's these guys called Fighter Jet Cockpit Simulators. Peek into Viper Wing, the new F-16 throttle grip, and it works in DCS, Prepare 3D, and BMS. Now, I always turn the audio off just in case these guys decide to use some kind of copyrighted material, but I'll post a link to this video so you guys can check it out for yourselves, but they've created a uh, TQS-like throttle, and uh, that's pretty promising. I, I don't know how much this stuff costs. To me, this looks like one of them like five grand or ten grand cockpits that you can get because it looks really nice. But um, it does mention DCS, and that's why I included it. So I'll include a link to this video so you can check it out for yourselves. So it looks like tournament season is going to be getting underway for DCS. Uh, these guys have posted a video for SADL 2020 uh, with 30 teams across two leagues this year promises to be the most action-packed yet. Pretty cool stuff. They posted a video and uh, I'll include a link to this in the uh, uh, details for the video as usual so you can check it out for yourself. So if you're into online tournaments and the SADL uh, DCS tournaments, uh, looks like they're ramping up and they're, they've thrown together a video to get people excited for it. So, over at the Stormbirds, they are speculating uh, based on the news that was just posted about the um, P-47 and uh, the progress they've made on it. And uh, combined with the interview at Grim Reapers with Nick Gray about a week or so back, uh, they're speculating that the uh, P-47 is very close for early access. And uh, I would have to agree with them after listening to that uh, interview and then looking at the details and how, how frequent they've been posting uh, about this. Uh, I think I would have to agree with Shamrock on 5 over at the Stormbirds that uh, the P-47 probably is very close to release. And uh, I will include a link to this article uh, in the details. So, War Thunder. I know people are going to be like, that's a game, that's not a sim, you shouldn't be including it. But you know what? It's fun. It's super fun. And uh, why not? You know, everybody needs a break once in a while. I'll tell you what, the tank battles in this are super fun. I think I'm, I'm enjoying the tank stuff more than I am the air stuff in War Thunder at this point. Uh, but the air stuff works really well in VR. You know, fantastic performance, and it looks good. So uh, it's hard to knock this game. It really is. But they're putting on a May sale. Discounts are not applied to vehicles from Northern Wind and Viking Fury. Well, that's a bummer because those are the new ones. And uh, rank 5 through 6 vehicles in the Gaijin store. That really pisses me off because I wanted to get my hands on the Abrams, but it's like 60 bucks. I have a hard time paying 60 bucks for something in this game. Um, I already got sucked in and paid 50 bucks for that Apache. Uh, and then it goes on to say the 1st through the 11th are modifications. The 7th through the 11th, there's going to be discounts on the premium accounts. And they're putting together this bundle called Weapons of Victory that is normally like $308 and it's going to be 75% off. It's only going to be $77 and it's going to come with all this stuff. One nice thing I noticed is there's a couple of these packs that are cheap that you can buy that come with like 120,000 silver silver uh, lions and then some of them come with like 750 gold eagles all those can be used to help level you up in the game and it's cheaper to buy that five dollar pack by itself on sale than it is to buy the other things you know what I mean plus you get a vehicle you can piss around with so this might be the best deal of all yet it doesn't include too many things I would really want other than that P47 sounds good, the P51 sounds good, the IS-2 sounds good, the Spitfire sounds good, not so much into the Yak-9, don't care a lot about an LA-7, you know, um, but this might be the best bu best deal of all, and this will be starting on May 7th. So, um, and then they say available again, the following vehicles previously withdrawn from the sale and store can now be purchased using Gold Eagles in-game. So these guys are going to show back up, supposedly, and then the last chance to get these packs here. So I'll include a link to this, as always, at the uh, bottom of the uh, video details, so you can check it out for yourself. 
So I, I usually like to include videos from people uh, in the community that I think are worthy. And um, this guy threw together versus Terminus a variety of really freaking awesome MI8 tutorials and um, pretty cool stuff. So if you want to learn to fly the MI8 and um, done by a guy that's doing it in a, in a very you know easy to understand tutorial manner, uh, this guy's videos are pretty cool. And uh, dude's really calm. I like his voice. It, it's very helpful when you have somebody that you can understand too. T is the hot and high variant, which had some upgrades allowing it to operate at a higher ceiling with more weight, with more passengers, and in hotter weather. And V2 just refers to the second variant. So it's, 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 I think that's the most important thing when you're listening to a tutorial is being able to understand the person that's, you know, presenting you with uh, the information. And uh, that's one plus and one reason why I, I really like these videos is I can understand what the guy's saying. I, I love Red Kite. He is like awesome, but it seems like, you know, European people sometimes is kind of a little bit hard to understand sometimes. And, uh, or even Cap at the Grim Reapers sometimes, you know. Uh, it's nice to have a English speaking voice that is natural when it comes to tutorials if you're American from the US and again that's not being racist or anything it's just you know being realistic you know some people have a hard time understanding what some people say um, I don't have that bad of a hard time but I know some people do I know my girlfriend we try to watch stuff sometimes that are British shows and she's like what the fuck did he just say and I'm like I know what he said because I have friends that are British that I've played online games with for years so I can understand most of this stuff but even sometimes I gotta second guess something so this guy's videos are pretty awesome and if you want to learn about the MI8 the hip um, his series of videos are pretty in-depth I mean there's like my god 20 videos you know very cool stuff and he covers pretty much damn near everything uh, I give this guy an A for effort it's definitely really good stuff so in Razbam news this was from last week but it didn't make it into the news but they have posted a couple of new images of the Falklands map that I thought was pretty impressive uh, can't wait to see this come to fruition and uh, to be in DCS world the Falklands map and the Sea Harrier that they're working on uh, very cool stuff. So I'm going to leave it at that, guys. Uh, there is no update for DCS World this week either. That was announced earlier in the week. And um, kind of a bummer, but, you know, at the same time, it is what it is. And they're hard at work at doing things, and I appreciate the efforts. Um, otherwise, um, as for me, what have I been playing? And maybe this is something I'm going to include at the end of the news bits from now on. Is you know, Hey, what's Rod playing this week? Uh, I'll tell you what, I've been playing a lot of War Thunder. Um, I've been getting into the tank battles. That's a lot of fun. It's a nice break from you know the uh, the, the cerebralness of trying to remember procedures <laughs> in various aircraft to how to do things. You know, I have been playing with DCS as well though, and I've been in the JF-17 uh, pissing around, having some fun. I've been tinkering around in the MiG-15 as well. Uh, those are what I've been doing in DCS, and then I hopped over into IL-2 for a little bit and uh, was playing around in a couple of different aircraft in IL-2 and VR. Um, the only thing that's been very frustrating for me is trying to fly DCS in VR. Um, something has happened over the past, you know, since 2.5.6, uh, DCS in VR is fucking atrocious. I have an i9, 9900K running at stock speeds, 32 gigabytes of memory, um, Z390 motherboard, um, 2080 Super video card, I mean, second fastest video card you can get for gaming. Uh, the best processor you can get for gaming at the moment. Uh, fantastic, you know, throughput with the motherboard that I have, 3000 megahertz memory, and um, I can't seem to get much more than, you know, 30 FPS for the most part, and maybe as high as 40 here and there. But even at that, it is very, even when, it, when I'm hitting 40 on my Rift S, it is very jittery, it's very stuttery. 
it's just fucking bad and it was never this bad before 2.5.6 and I've tweaked everything and turned shit all the way down to low even uh, with a pixel density of just 1.5 using oculus tray tool on top of that to turn off ASW to you know tweak everything as best I possibly can and it's just not like it was before 2.5.6 um, it's really hard to enjoy the VR experience in DCS world right now for me uh, other people's mileage may vary. People are so hooked on it that they just deal with it, I guess. But, you know, when you play IL-2 and War Thunder and the other games that are in VR, um, and you see what great performance really is, it gets very depressing to mess with DCS in VR. And uh, I've been enjoying it more on my Super Ultra Wide with Track IR than I'm able to in VR at the moment. So I, I tried to put together some VR videos, and I may post them. I don't know. They're, they're bad. Um, because of the performance and there's just nothing you can do about it at the moment it, it's really bad they they need to fix this shit man it's terrible right now and it never used to be that bad so that's what I'm up to so that is the flight sim news for May 2nd 2020 as always thanks for watching please subscribe to the channel feel free to hit that like button and until next time guys <laughs>